What's up? This is Elia Einhorn. Welcome to the TalkHouse podcast. Today I'm joined by Nick Dawson, editor in chief of TalkHouse Film. And we have a hell of a show for you, which was recorded live at the flagship Sono store in Soho, Iron and Wine's Sam Beam, in conversation with actor Michael Chernus. Yeah, these are possibly the two nicest people we've ever not not right? to do a disservice. We've had nice people, but very, these guys very nice. Next level nice. Next level nice. Just humble, sweet, softly spoken. It's a cold day outside as as we're recording this. I'm sure it will be when you're listening to it. This conversation is a, is being huddled around a warm fire with a, a cup of coffee. It's a it's a gentle hug from a friend. <laughs> and these two are, in fact, old friends who we reunited for the podcast. Now, the occasion, Sam was in town with Aaron and Wine performing that night. He's got a fantastic new record out called Beast Epic. And Nick, if I may, I'd like to play for the listeners a song that I premiered on Pitchfork Radio last year when Sam happened to stroll through the studio with an acoustic guitar and <laughs> play it before it was even recorded. Check this out. This is a beautiful joint called Thomas County Law. Thomas County Law's got a crooked tooth Every traffic light is red when it tells the truth Church bell isn't kidding when it cries for you. Nobody looks away. Really nice, isn't it? That's lovely. Iron and Wine came to prominence during the aughts with the fantastic record, The Creek Drank the Cradle. And for about a decade and a half, Sam Beam has been writing and recording absolutely beautiful songs known best for their finger-picked, gentle delivery and a very graceful tackling of the bigger issues in life. As mentioned in this talk, a lot of his songs are about death. And Nick, I'm willing to postulate. I'm willing to say this guy just might be more goth than Bauhaus. Wow. Yeah. That's something I'm going to have to think about deeply. But I'm yeah, I mean, I, that record made a big impact on me uh, back when it came out. And, and the thing that I didn't know at the time was that he was a film professor. Right, right. One of the things they talk about in, in this conversation is sort of like the the path that they took from you know, their creative origins to where they are now. Sam originally conceived himself as a painter who sort of dabbled in music as a hobby and, and then became a, a, a filmmaker um, and became a film professor when he had kids, and he, of which he now has five. And similarly, you know, Michael defined himself early on as, as a theater actor, was very, very serious about his craft, but now his career in, in film and TV has totally taken off. And that's where I first saw him, Nick. I first saw him as Piper Chapman's brother, in Orange is the New Black. Yeah, the stoner dude. The stoner dude. Yeah. The fascinating thing about Michael is that he's kind of been appearing everywhere and you can sort of look back through his his filmography and, and like the, the TV shows that he's been in and go, oh yeah, and I saw him in that. And in that. And, and he sort of is this chameleonic person who, you know, right now has come to prominence finally through just hard work and, and people wanting to put him in stuff. And what prominence? I mean, he's entered the Marvel Universe. For the first time, he is the Tinkerer. The Tinkerer. Of course, the movie Spider-Man Homecoming, which was a, a big, big deal this summer. Blockbuster. One of the movies of the summer. Uh, and, and you know, life changes when you're in a, in a Marvel movie. It certainly does. Now, Nick, the guys take in a lot in this conversation. One of my favorites is how Michael has actually woven Sam's music into the very fabric of his stage acting. Yeah, that was fascinating. And, and he also talks about the way that drama became a, a drug for him as, as a kid with like the plays of Sam Shepard and David Mamet. We hear about the truth of Michael's career, which is that it's all been designed to freak Sam out. I believe it. I believe it. And we also hear about Sam, who has, of course, his roots in film and his plans for a film project in the very near future. Very cool stuff. Should we roll the tape? Let's do it. Hey, Michael. Hey. How's, How's it going? going? Full disclosure, Michael and I have known each other for a while. Yeah. So this is more of a... But we haven't seen each other for a long time. No, so, so this is, is just a, a catch-up that people are now listening to. Mm, catch-up. Yeah, catch-up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Well, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So do you. The beard is in full bloom. Yeah, it's at that end of summer, kind of giving it all it's, it has. Giving it all. Right, yeah. <laughs> Tired and... but. Uh, let's move on. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been really busy, though. We were catching up a second ago and just realizing that I had, in the meantime, between last I saw you in L.A. and now, you've been super busy. I've been super busy, um, very, very 
gratefully. Uh, I've been married since I saw you last. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, so much. That, to, so that's much a whole other conversation. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, things are good. I. Um, uh, it's it's all been it's been sort of a wild ride the past couple of years that we were sort of saying earlier, but I feel like um, my career has like taken on this whole new um, chapter that I didn't always see coming. You know, I sort of right started in the theater. And, yeah, you know. that's what was we were talking about. Uh, sorry, just to catch you up on, <laughs> on a previous conversation, <laughs> but let's start it now. Um, we were talking about how last we had seen each other, we, you were doing more theater stuff and and dabbling in um, film work, uh, getting a lot of indie work here and there and mm -hmm. stuff. And now I just, I told you earlier, it's like you're always sneaking up behind me. You like catch <laughs> me by surprise in like every other movie that I see or TV show or something. So I was just always, oh, look, there's a friend I know. That's why I do it. Playing an evil For person. You. What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My whole career is just, you know, designed to freak you out. And, uh, <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm just more interested in what, um, besides your machinations of how to scare me, um, I was curious how, just what your expectations were and now that you're on this other side and, and really busy and have moved and have gotten married, you have all these new experiences to fill me in on. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it, you know, it's funny. I was, I, I just turned 40 uh, a little bit ago. And, That's um, fun. Yeah, and my mom sent me very sweetly like a package of all these old, like high school programs from plays I was in and uh, this article that was written in like the local paper about me when I um, I left Cleveland where I grew up uh, to go to Juilliard when I was 18 and there was like some local paper that was like, you know, local actor makes good. And my 18-year-old pretentious self was like, I just want a career in the theater, you know. <laughs> Like, I don't want to sell out. And I was reading this the other day. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. But <laughs> I think for a long time that was sort of true. I think in the end, like, the practical constraints of a theater career, like making no money and sort of working yourself to death, just sort of it wasn't right. sustainable. But I think in the end, like, the thing that always drove me was just this, this – it's hard to talk about without sounding so cheesy. But, like, it was Go just a it. love of, like, being in front of an audience. Yeah. And, um Right. And telling stories. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like at that age, aren't we all just like carving out our personality and yeah. so polarized and like exactly, you know, there's no gray area in like what you could want. It's all like yeah. your ideas are so. And so, yeah, when you're an artist and you want to put out something important, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy to get to uh, go down those, those, um, I have no idea what I was going to say, but I remember. I remember that well, I uh, feeling. You, were, you must not have seen your career path. Uh, no, I remember wanting to be a very serious artist, though. Yeah, yeah, very serious. More film stuff at the time, or at the time, like eight. You know, when you're going to college, I was going into art school, and um, I had no idea what mm. I wanted to do. Yeah, no idea. Um, knew that I liked to make pictures, and I liked movies, and you know, just like the arts in general, but. Um, you know, I, I just recently, uh, my oldest daughter went to school and so you start to reflect, it went to college and so oh my God. you're reflecting on like, um, on yourself, of course, it always comes back to me. Right. <laughs> sure. But, uh, but thinking of like, what, what, who would I have been if I had just taken a break and just lived a little bit instead of going and, mm. and straight into school or something like that. But um, I think about, I think about that a lot too, because I feel like I was so obsessed with being an actor when I was like 13 and I think what if I just taken a couple of years to like yeah. live a life yeah but it's tough because I think be pursuing anything out of the box anything right. sort of artistic like takes a relentlessness that yeah um, and it's a funny conversation to have with yourself because you're always doing it with the benefit of hindsight which is right. you know at the time you're just winging it as oh, a kid absolutely. and you have no experience as, you don't even know what to ask for yeah <laughs> it's true you know what I mean yeah. you just sort of I know this is important to me and I'm going to go in this direction and see what happens. Uh, but, yeah. but then you figure out that life is like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Even when you're, even when you're older. Yeah. But Were you always playing music though? As, as a, for a hobby, yeah. yeah. Just because I liked music. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, uh, it's funny, um, I just never took it seriously for some reason. Mm. I mean, I, I still feel like I don't in a certain way. <laughs> Hopefully in a healthy way. Yeah. 
but um, never took it serious enough to think that that was something I could pursue. Oddly enough, decided painting was something I could pursue as a <laughs> as a as a career <laughs> as opposed to music. But uh, how about you? Did you? I mean, I feel like if I had been an actor, I would be in the exact same spot as you were going. You know, plays are where it's at because you feel like the idea is that's where people are have more integrity or something. It's not mired by trying to sell something. But if you, I think that was in there. I also think, and I don't mean this to be like self-deprecating but I think that was the world that accepted me first you know like I think I was uh, maybe just like a little too weird and unconventional for like the movies (laughs) to be like that kid you're not weird now though no no I cleaned it up Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, but uh, you know I think I just found the voices that I was drawn to were like the young playmakers that you know I and were really just pals of mine at the time it wasn't like um, like a playwright I've done a lot of work with is this guy Adam Rapp and um, at the time he was just a guy that I knew who like I liked hanging out with and we would get beers together and then eventually his work started getting done and I was he would put me in his little plays and and it just was this relationship and this collaboration that just took shape over time in this really sort of organic way right Um, at the time you thought there would be some moment where you were went from where you were at and wanting to be somewhere else to that place where you wanted to be and you found out that it just happens and you don't recognize the transition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt that way. Looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I felt that way too. For me, I'm a huge fan of you and, and your music and one of the things that I feel like Thanks. you do so well is transition. Like I feel like I've seen you in a number of phases from uh-huh. like very intimate sort of solo stuff to full band stuff to um, your collaborations with like Calexico and right, like right. it's I feel like you've been able to and I don't know I want to hear what you, maybe it's because you didn't plan this life out for yourself <laughs> that you've been able to sort of re, not reinvent yourself but to stretch yourself as an artist continually. Um, oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I mean it's definitely it's been uh, an important thing to me. Um, I don't, can't tell whether I'm like reaching, always reaching for something new or just get bored with what I'm doing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it has more to do with just the idea of all my favorite artists, whether it's filmmakers or, or artists, painters or, or even musicians. They are always sort of taking some, some elemental thing that they do and that only they do and then keep trying to dress it in different clothes and mm. see what it looks like in different clothes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so like a like an easy thing would be like a director and like genre. You right. can jump from genre to genre, but you recognize a director's style. Sure. Um, that was always my goal. Um, it just took me a while to figure out what it was, what my element was <laughs> that I was playing with. But I, um, yeah, I don't really go into it with, uh, that said, I don't really have much of an MO or a way to do that, you just sort of look backwards and say, oh, in hindsight, again, you can look back and say, oh, I was trying on these different things. Mm. But at the time, you're just sort of winging it, trying to be in the moment and reacting to what's coming up, yeah. like some a new relationship or some new instrument that you've gotten or right. some, I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, though. That's uh, really kind of you. Some people, you, music's funny like that. Um, I feel like some people <clears throat> look for music to be, or their artists to be one thing, something reliable, and some right. people are looking for them to shock or something to right. to, to inspire by being different sometimes or yeah. surprise. Uh-huh. Um, and even myself included, I don't know if you're like this, but I listen for... Yeah, a super fickle listener. There's some people where I expect them to do so, to turn my head and surprise me, and some people I say, "Oh, that's too different." <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. so ridiculous. Yeah, no, I know. I don't I, feel like actors have that problem though. Do you not think as so? much? I think. I mean, sometimes, but I think in a way, it's it's always um, sort of applauded when actors stretch themselves. Yeah, I feel like Definitely. people have an attachment to to music artists that you. you if you go too far from the thing right. I want, right. I'm going to be pissed. I, um, guess there, I guess there is ways uh, that actors get... I mean, there's definitely actors that play to type 
or played yeah. against type, you know, they get typecast super totally. either because of like some physical feature or just their yeah. personality, you know. But but at the same time they're asked to butt up against it a lot more, I think, than musicians. Yeah, much more. Well, it, I mean, in, I think the, maybe the difference is we're directly selling ourselves. Like, you, <laughs> <laughs> you at least have, like, a song to hide behind or an instrument to hide behind, but I'm like, hey, what about this guy? <laughs> <You> know, <it's> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, do you feel, like, burdened? Like, are there songs that you feel like people want you to sing every time they come see you? And Oh, well, it doesn't feel like a burden to me. I mean, I feel... You know, there's so much music out there. I mean, there's so much music that are you in a certain way you feel blessed that people are just still paying attention because right. there's so many options. Good Lord. Yeah, I mean, do I need to play <clears throat> Flightless Bird again? No, not for myself personally, yeah. but it's a fun job to get yeah, up and sure. play something that, yeah. you know, I still, it feels like a blessing in a lot of ways. It would be one thing if I had to like read a 300 page novel every night that people wanted to hear, but it's a three-minute song, so. <laughs> I would pay and to I, hear you read a 300-page novel. You're going to get pigeonholed for that now. Uh, <laughs> that might take a while to have. <laughs> but you have um, a really deep catalog. I mean, you've got a lot of songs at this point. Yeah, that's, so. yeah and, and I don't feel like, I do, uh, and I don't feel like um, burdened by any of those mm. songs. You know, I don't feel like, like you were saying, you're, I, don't, I don't feel like uh, I have to get up and play a certain role. I just get up and sing mm. a song that I, you know, yeah. that I wrote. I didn't have to, like, put on a persona. Mm. But um, at the same time, there are definitely songs that I don't... But I also get to not play them. I can also just yeah, put them away totally for a little imagine, while yeah. and, and do something else. Yeah. But... but um, so what else has been going on? I feel like I want to like. I feel like I'm catching up. And you've been in like up. Spider Man. Let's, you've been in like the. I'm in the Spider Man, <laughs> a little indie film Spider Man, up and coming superhero. Yeah, it's doing okay. <laughs> a couple of people have seen it. It's, uh, Did you know about the Tinkerer? I didn't know about the Tinkerer until no, until you became they, him. Until I became him. Until yeah. they called me. Um. Yeah. He's a he's a cool guy. He's one of the he's one of the. Uh, it might be the first time anyone's ever called the Tinkerer a cool guy. Uh, he's one of like the OG villains for Spider-Man, though. He was in those like very first issues. He and the Vulture, who Michael Keaton plays, are like two of the like old school right. uh, Spider-Man baddies. Um, and in the original comic book, he's sort of this like skinny, bald, old scientist type guy. I can and see why they why so they, yeah, cast so they, you, they yeah. typecast me again. Um, <laughs> So in our 2017 version, he's sort of like a tech geek kind of guy. Um, right. But it's just cool because uh, I feel like the the folks at Marvel are just really doing something interesting now where I feel like they they know that they have this rabid fan base that's paying attention. And so yeah. they tease them, they give them what they want sometimes, they turn it on its head, they like have all these hidden clues and Easter eggs, they call them in the films. Right. And so you really like... A layman who knows nothing about the comics can watch them and, and be interested, but then somebody who's obsessive about it can also right. get a bunch out of it too. Yeah. Um, um, how did the Orange is the New Black bit come about? That, and how's uh, that been? It's funny, sort of when we were talking earlier about friends and relationships that you just don't know what they're going to turn into. A playwright friend of mine, Nick Jones, was on the writing staff for the first couple seasons. And the story he told me at least... Uh, uh, was that when they were sort of pitching the idea for the first season in the writer's room, they decided that Piper was going to have this sort of like hippie, long-haired brother. And um, he says they had like sort of an idea wall. And when they were like, who should it be? Like, what should he look like? That Nick Googled a picture of me and he was like, like this guy? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, sure, put it on the wall. And then when it time, came time to cast it, they're like, who are we going to get to play this brother? And he's like, well, what about that guy who's on the wall? And they just called me and offered it to me. And... Uh, I had weirdly played the the actress Taylor Schilling who plays Piper. I had played her brother on a different series before <laughs> on this NBC <laughs> hospital drama called Mercy. So I just figured they're like, get, that's what the, I was get the guy. That's how I was assuming it came about. Yeah, sure. I was just assuming. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you were a big Mercy <laughs> fan. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> right, I sent you that Mercy t-shirt back in the day. Uh, um, 
Yeah. So it was just like totally out of, out of the blue. And um, I feel like that's how my career has worked in a lot of ways. It's like, you know, it, it all came sort of through weird channels. It wasn't just like I auditioned for it and I got the Right, part. right. Yeah. You know, if yeah. someone is to ask you, how do I get from point A to point B? Yeah. To say you just be nice to people. Just be nice to people. <laughs> <laughs> Go out for beers with them. Yeah. Uh, you know. But else, you know, take it seriously. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I think that's a given, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I've been extremely lucky in that way, too. I mean, it, you know. And also be lucky. Yeah, be lucky, <laughs> be nice, and you'll, you'll have a good time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this. I can't remember if I ever told you, but your music has often um, been a direct sort of inspiration for me. And I did a play, a beautiful play by a playwright, Annie Baker, a play called The Aliens. And, uh, in it, I have I had to go through like some pretty big emotional gymnastics, and between Act One and Act Two, uh, one of the main characters, who's my character's best friend, dies in during the intermission, basically. Oh, wow. And um, I would listen backstage during intermission to Dead Man's Will. Oh wow! And the Trapeze Swinger, and uh, a couple of your songs that just would just to break just you. break my <laughs> heart. <laughs> And make me cry, and <laughs> just to get you in the mood, just get me in the mood, and make my acting easier. Um, so I often have your voice in my head when I'm. Wow, that's something. cool, man! I didn't know that. You yeah. didn't tell me that. You're so cagey. Yeah. Well, it's a weird thing to be like, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I find yeah. that a lot of people uh, don't know how to talk to me about my music because yeah. it's not like a jokey, fun place to talk. About. It's a private yeah. place where yeah. it usually meets them. Yeah. Um, well, music's hard Which to talk cool. about in general, and <laughs> especially, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But, yeah. Well, you write these, I, I used the word intimate before, but I also am thinking about you today. I feel like you write songs that are, um, for me, in the best way, sort of timeless. Like, no, thanks. I feel like it's not, you're not writing about pop culture or cell phones. Not or, yet. You know, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> like, it, I give could a, be. Give me a minute, though. Yeah, I feel like, thank you. Yeah. By the way, I don't mean to interrupt you when you're complimenting me. No um, <laughs> but at the same time, I do feel like um, those things are kind of boring. I don't know. I, they're not boring because I'm thinking about them all the time. But there's there's oh, seems like, to be a yeah, yeah. certain set of rules when I sit down to write. Yeah. Um, and it it has its own rules different from the rules of when I'm having a conversation with someone or mm. just going through my thoughts in the day when I sit down with a tune in mind. And I also, I like to joke and like cut up with my friends. I, But I don't seem to be able to find huh. space for that in songs. When I sit down to write a song, it seems to have to yeah. be about life or death, mm. heavy things. <laughs> I think maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's the only place I get that stuff out. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or- but... But I do feel like songs are good for that um, because, I don't know, songs have so much space. You could do anything. Yeah. You can express any emotional content you want to in a song, whether you want to scream for joy or scream in pain or yeah. scream for... Um, and so I don't seem to be able to scream for joy. I just scream for... Actually, that's not I feel like the there's truth. a lot of joy in the music. <laughs> yeah, I was going to... I mean, I feel like you're... you're, you're grappling with the big stuff. I mean, I feel like death is, it's is present of, in a lot of your songs. And, yeah. I, f- and, I feel like people don't know how to talk to me about it because we don't know how to... Our, our contact with that side of our existence is sort of lost in our culture. Mm-hmm. Like we sort of put death away in a yeah. safe place where we don't really know how to talk about loss or, or those cycles of life, the final cycle of life. Yeah. And I found a safe place for myself writing about it. Mm. Um, but I don't always know how to talk to people about it. And then when people do try to talk to me about it, I'm always like, uh, I don't really know you, but <laughs> but uh, I'm, thank you. I'm glad this song, you know, touched you in a way. It's a strange, yeah, it's I a bet. strange um, relationship I have with with putting those uh, that's that content out into the world, but also being removed from the people that it reaches you know it's a strange yeah strange thing yeah but i don't mean the arts in general you never know how you're gonna affect people i mean acting's the same you're just on the stage and trying to be in the moment and you know not in control of what everyone else out in the audience is receiving but willing to put it out there and yeah. just see what happens 
Yeah. And just riding that wave. I mean, you know, it's like, it's, I don't know if you feel the same way about performing in front of, I feel like when I'm in front of an audience, it's just like, I, I, there's so much relinquishing of control that I have to do. Like, you know, it's just like, I can't, I can't, uh, I can just do my job, but it's not up to me, like what your experience of this is. And, um, yeah. I think there's an art is like in general, whether it's acting or music or the visual arts in general, I mean, that's kind of our job. It's just to not answer every question, but just pose the questions mm-hmm. and put it out there and just create a dialogue instead of saying, I have all the answers. Would you like to hear them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's my favorite, my favorite type of art. <laughs> what do your kids think of what you do? Uh, you know, well, I have a bunch, and so yeah. they <laughs> very kind of, yeah. Uh, you, you know, five. Yeah, the yeah. oldest one is nineteen, and you know, she's gone through the the right. whole gamut of it. Like, it's cool, Dad. You know, gets to do these cool things, or right. or like, man, I wish my friends would like me instead of just my dad's <laughs> Twilight song. You know, right. to all the thing. Now it's just part of her, um, part of her experiences. Mm-hmm you know, walking around this planet. Her dad does this for a living. And so, but at the same time, I feel like she has the benefit of seeing the reality of what that kind of life is, where I, when I was growing up, listening to my heroes going like, man, I wonder what their their life must be so, you know, uh, romantic right. or, or just magical. And right. she's like, yeah, magic is... <laughs> 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 which, is a, which is good, I yeah, think. Yeah, she's healthy. Yeah. She's... Um, She's really creative and um, just, but has a good sense of like what that kind of life is like. Yeah, much more, and much more so than I did. Just sure running into it blindly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, I remember that time. If I could go back, yeah, to some time in yeah. my life, it would be art school. Really? That would. Oh yeah. Just you know, knowing what I know now, you'd be like, just so fun. Just killing it. Just was that what did you, you went to Juilliard? Yeah, what was that like? That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was so Juilliard. It's a it's a different place now. It's like much more, I think, sort of touchy feely. But at the time, it was like very, um, it was sort of very competitive and kind of kind of dark. Like it was it was sort of like the isn't that good prep though? <laughs> yeah, in a way. Yeah, in a way. But I think it also broke a lot of people. You know, yeah. there were a lot of talented people who I feel like. Um, you know, I think they try to break you down and the idea is that they'll build you back up, but some, don't always some people that don't build back yeah, up. Forget yeah. that part. Yeah. Oh, we just yeah. ran out of time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Broke you down, but you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. What were we going to do? <laughs> what was next? Yeah. Um, next class. Um, I do feel like that's important, though. I mean, I, I feel like most personality, well, that's a, that's a tough one because, you know, the, yeah, I do I feel like... Every, Creative types need to be nurtured, but at the same time, given a, you know, the, a realistic outlook on what, how things are going to be, mm-hmm. um, that's tricky. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like most people who are really serious about it, and to be successful at any art, you have to just love doing the thing, and they'll do it no matter what their instructor, how their instructor screwed them over or, or lifted them up. Yeah. I mean, I think um, training for me pushed me in a way that I never would have pushed myself. Yeah, Um, yeah. I feel like I was given um, sort of parameters and, uh, you know, a certain amount of restriction was helpful for me, especially when I was younger. But um, at the same time, I feel like I was, there was, when I was in school, I felt like there was a right way to do things. Like there was a right way to talk and stand and be in a, Right. The right way to be myself. And then I got out yeah. of school and, you know, I was like, oh, wait, there's a million different ways to, <laughs> to do yeah. this, you know. Um, definitely, yeah, yeah. That's that's a definitely a part of life. Yeah. Um, feeling the right or the right way is a, right. it's a pretty subjective idea. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Did you always know that you wanted to go to acting school? I mean, I know you your mom kept the clippings. but She kept the you? clippings. I did. I think I... Uh, the first, I was sort of like a, 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 like a nerdy spell as a kid in, uh, in like junior high. And uh, the theater in the beginning was like, that was the community that sort of accepted me. And, yeah. uh, but the first play I ever did, it was just like, ooh, yeah, give me more of that. And um, 
I immediately started taking classes at this children's theater school uh, just outside of Cleveland where I grew up. And um, it was kids from all over the greater Cleveland area. And we, there were like weekend classes and that's where like the bug really bit me. And uh, mm-hmm. there was a guy who was a couple years older than me um, and he got into Juilliard. And so he was a senior when I was a freshman and I really kind of just wanted to be him. Like he was yeah, this yeah. cool guy and he would come back in the summers. Um, did he do his eyebrows like that? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's why I do that. Uh, he, uh, you know, he was just like, he like wore like a leather jacket and like smoked cigarettes and it was just like, I mean, it's so dumb. But like, and he introduced really? me to like Sam Shepard plays. Like I was right. doing mostly like children's theater. I was like doing like Hansel and Gretel and he was like, here, yeah, read this. I was, like, Holy shit. Um, <laughs> this is in Hansel and yeah, right. he, he dosed me with words. And, uh, <laughs> First one's free. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> do you have any more of those David Hammond plays, man? <laughs> um, uh, and so uh, I really kind of was just like, I have to move to New York and go to Juilliard so I can be like that guy. Oddly enough, I can imagine you really wanting to go back and do Hansel and Gretel now though, yeah, that totally you have now. To, you've done. That that's exactly <laughs> that's what I want to do. Maybe we can do that together. Just say you the can word, write man. the music. You got my number. Just call me. Great, cool. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, we keep no, digressing no. and we we'll keep um, on having this private conversation. I'm sorry, for forgetting that I was supposed to be talking to the thing. There's right. no right way to do this, Sam. <laughs> yeah, right. It's subjective. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, but Juilliard, <laughs> did you? So you knew that you wanted to go, and when you went, did you say, "This is me"? Yes. Sort of. I think I had no idea what I was getting myself into. You know, I think I knew that I wanted to study acting and I knew I wanted to be in New York. And um, the, the, the program at Juilliard, there's, it's a mix of, there's some people who were right out of high school, but then there were people who were, had completed four years of college and for them it was sort of a master's situation. There were people who mm. had been professional actors for a couple of years. I think the oldest person in our class was 32 when I started and I was 18. And so I like faked being older for like, you know, it was like this thing of moving to New York from Cleveland and being around all these older people that I just, I think it took me a while to be authentic. Like I was just like, I'm going to pretend I know what you're talking about. Like (laughs) I'm going to lie and say, I've seen that, that movie that, Oh, we're not supposed to do that. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I do that still. (laughs) I'm too, I'm too. But yeah, I mean, I, but you're also at this age where you're still carving out yeah, who you're gonna be? I mean, creating your identity. Yeah, yeah. It's a funny time to be at such a, such a serious, like making serious choices when you're yeah. don't have a whole lot to fall back. But anyway, I'm sorry. No, I yeah, again. that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what about you? You, we've talked about. It was mine. Was I went to art school, right. and it was a similar thing where we're all like 20 years old and trying to be amateur philosophers. It was yeah. ridiculous. And a lot of teachers were either the same polarized thing, super in- inspiring, or just beat you down. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I gleaned from the whole thing by and by was that you just have to fall in love with what you're doing. With, For me, it was painting and making marks, just falling in love with moving paint around. Mm. Um, and then I eventually got into filmmaking and followed that rabbit hole. But also how people's criticism and that social atmosphere is fun and also horrifying and bludgeoning for your art. But at the same time, all those things are valuable because Mm you learn that everyone has a different opinion. And like we were saying before, right is a subjective idea. And and it's really like you have to find what you you like and just do it as much as you want to. trying to pull that back to acting and I don't know how um, <laughs> no worries uh, but you did so then you were you were teaching film yeah well for, yeah I guess I went down to the rabbit hole and then got into filmmaking and when was doing production stuff and when my kids came along started um, teaching because the hours were were more friendly to having kids mm. um, than production hours because they get a little long yeah um and I was always like naively of the idea that, you know, those who don't do teach. And it's really not true. It's, it's not like true, it was yeah. so like inspiring yeah. to me. I just, and I do this all the time with music. You internalize all these ideas, but just enough to do them, huh. but don't really know how to explain it 
thoroughly yeah. to someone. Yeah. But then when you take a moment to explain it thoroughly to someone, you learn, oh, this is why. I, it, you do it a lot with technical things, but also, you know, aesthetic things and yeah. other things. I'm sure acting is probably similar. Yeah, the mm-hmm. tiny little bit that I've ever tried to teach or talk about acting or direct yeah. something, like it's, uh, yeah, you're forced to be like, yeah, how do I yeah. approach a scene? <laughs> like what... Right, it's, so much of it is instinctual, mm-hmm. but to actually have to then verbalize it, it I think it refines and crystallizes your process for you. And yeah, the, um, yeah, yeah, break it down. Uh, yeah. So that was a really rewarding experience. Um, glad to not have to do that now, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it was a lot of fun and, yeah. and really rewarding. You've talked to me before, though, about maybe making a film someday. Are you interested? Yeah, in yeah, film? always. Uh, I have a writing partner in, in Austin. We keep dabbling with, with screenplay. My problem is I have a hard time multitasking, and mm-hmm. I've always been really focused on writing songs and always wanting to do music but never putting the songbook away mm-hmm. long enough to to dig in because it's sense. a long, huge process. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I think I feel like I'm getting to that point where this is the first time I don't really have another record in mind. I'm just sort of living in the moment of putting this one out and playing these songs, and then working on some paintings and um, and preparing a movie. Yeah, there's a couple of books like oh, to cool. the option. Yeah, yeah. I was always like, you know, writing is kind of my thing. I was like, yeah, I'll finish one of these screenplays. But finishing screenplays are hard. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> finishing things are hard. Oh yeah, <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Songs are easy. Songs are easier. They're short. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I watched the two videos for your new record. Oh, thanks. You're 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 good in them. You, you're doing some acting there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So acting, acting it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm always so shy. Those things are really? so hard. Oh yeah, you're so, so good. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just don't give a fuck anymore. I just like yeah. Hey, your camera's on. Key, okay. I think yeah. It helps. It helps. But I I always have a hard time. I feel like it's also uh, just always in my head. I have a hard mm. time. I've always loved uh, plays and productions, but always stay behind the camera because I can watch what's happening and think about it and then adjust instead of like being in the moment right. and just you know what I mean. Reacting, I can always yeah. tell. But there's a lag between what I'm, and I feel like people I act against mm. feel the lag too. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, music, it took me a long time to jump in and not be constantly processing. Yeah. I think that's why I just loved um, recording for so yeah. long because it was making sure. something, thinking about it, doing it again, yeah. or changing it. Um, but yeah, you live and you learn. It's, I've, since been doing it enough where now you find the joy in just getting out there and seeing what happened, yeah. being in the moment. Yeah. But, yeah so, you, I, so I'm always I have to imagine, I mean, I don't know, this is maybe sounding like a stupid question, but when you were making those original like recordings just yeah. at home, because I used to play music with my friends and like right, right. make home recordings, but like yours, you were you like, this is so dumb. But were you like, I'm onto something here? Or did, did you have a sense that what you were uh, making was special? Or I mean, I like the way it sounded. I wouldn't, I couldn't really, you know, you're just sort of in it too long, smelling your own breath to really know uh-huh. what value it is um, outside of just doing it. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I liked lots of music and I could tell it was different than the other things I was hearing. Not terribly different, but, you know, unique enough. Um and I knew it was something that I really liked doing, so it was worth spending a lot of time on. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I don't, I didn't really have much of a, maybe I don't always have a much, quite enough self awareness. Sure. Maybe that's how I get by. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I realize it's sort of like an odd question, too, because it's, you know, you're having to look back knowing everything you know now, but like mm. maybe it's because you were sort of consciously sort of, being able to sort of re-record and and be in private with it, but I remember first hearing your first record and just feeling like it was unlike anything else that oh, was yeah. out there at the time because it was so per- it felt so personal and it felt oh, yeah. um, it had that great quality of like someone making something that oh cool felt important to them, but it didn't feel like right over 
overproduced and overwrought. And oh, right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't. Um, it was definitely minimalistic, <laughs> but at the same time, I, I felt like there were things going on that were similar. You know, like not may, maybe not necessarily right at the exact same moment, but I always felt it was like some big cross between Cowboy Junkies or Mazzy Star or. Will Oldham stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like it's all in the water. I didn't mm-hmm. feel like I was like creating something out of the ether. It was just drawn from a lot of different sure. things. Um, but I felt like maybe just my vocal approach or and how it all kind of weaved together mm-hmm. maybe made it feel you know along with the subject matter. Um, maybe made it um, feel like its own thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I never felt totally unique. To me, just because mm-hmm. I knew all these other things that were sort of swimming in similar water, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But I guess yeah. you know, I guess it's like movies though. You can say like about you know, well, this heist movie, and then there's like all these other heist movies that sure. are that are like right, great, but not that one. <laughs> yeah, there's just some of them have their own, and I don't think that's something you can really plan. You just sort of let your, in hindsight, I didn't have any plan. About yeah, you just doing what you. And maybe that's what I, I sense in your music too, is and that's maybe that's more what I mean. It didn't doesn't feel like someone who's like got this like agenda. Right. And it's like and now I'm gonna get lack of self awareness. That's there what it is. I mean. Yeah, that's the theme. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you feel like? Because I mean, I was talking about um, acting uh, and me having a hard time stopping the processing was that something that you had to go to i've always like my all my actor friends have a different thing some of them just like to get up and do stuff and some of them are very particular um about how they approach things what was yours i mean it's interesting it's it varies from role to role i mean i think for me maybe what i'm jealous of and what you do is like i feel like there's a certain amount of just whoring myself that I have to do this sort of... <laughs> That's what I love about you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's just inherent in the job where I feel like you, there's, there's things you do because you're like, well, that's, you know, that's a good gig and that's going to get more people to right, right. know me and then that way I'll be able to go back and do the little art projects that I want to do. But right, like, right. I feel like for me, process is, it all depends on the thing. Like, to be totally honest, some projects don't require as much yeah, forethought yeah. or as much research or, as, or just don't as, require as much from me. And right, then right. there are other things that require all of you. And they're all fun in their own ways. You know, I love to do silly, stupid comedy stuff. And, like, yeah, yeah. that exercises a certain muscle of my personality and my, yeah. my humanness that I, like, that needs to be expressed as well. But, like, I... Uh, there's just, you know, there's sometimes you're just like, I, I have to do dumb stuff in order to do the good stuff. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, again, it's all, that's probably, I hate to say it, somebody might like your funny stuff more than your serious oh, stuff. Oh, sure, totally. I think most people do, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that strange, though? Do you yeah. find a relationship with, with your audience where you're like, why don't you guys like this stuff that I'm doing? Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know it's it's hard because I feel like you like the character on Orange and the Black is sort of this I love him, but it's like that's still the thing I get recognized the most for, and he's like sort of like a hippie stoner, pretty popular show. Yeah, <laughs> some people have seen it, but it's uh, you know I don't want to be that sort of like right hippie stony brother all the time. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's yeah. A, you want to be able to express the full spectrum of yeah. all the things that you can do. Yeah. I mean, the actor I always come back to is Philip Seymour Hoffman was like a big hero of mine. And yeah. the way that he was able to be a quote unquote character actor and play all these very different kinds of people. Right. But um, it always felt like there was a p- authentic part of Phil that was coming through them too. It wasn't right, like, right. now I put on some right. glasses and grow a funny mustache and I'm a different right. person. There was he would change physically, but he would also channel some part of his his truth through it. And, right, right. And make these sort of character characters real people and, right. you know, people that you could um, really believe in and get behind and, you know. So Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, you were saying that I was like thinking about all the roles that I'd seen him in and like which one, like, like oh my God, yeah. He just did like all these. I yeah. think, do you remember that... Um, was so Moneyball, where he was like the baseball coach? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, and then him all these Big great like, and physical he, things to lean on and just dig into. He was so fun. He was great. But yeah, yeah I know what you mean. 
Um, it's one of those seven, seven minute pauses. Yeah. But I think we've been talking more than seven, <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> um, so you got a tour. Tour, yeah. New record. Tour, tour, new record. Uh, yeah, this has been a fun one. Um, it feels similar to some of the older records, just in it's more sparse in the approach, mm-hmm. but uh, it doesn't really feel like walking backwards. It feels like following a circle around to the same place. Mm. Yeah, which is kind of a fun way. That's right to get back to that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you got coming up? You doing the Patriot thing? Getting season ready to two go? of Patriot, we're going to shoot in Paris. Um, I don't know if that was a spoiler. Shit, maybe I'm not Uh-oh. supposed to say that. You're uh, fired. Whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, just got fired. Paris, uh, Paris Texas. Paris, Texas. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Parisburg, Virginia. Uh, right. <laughs> Paris, Ohio. Uh, so I'll be doing that, and uh, I'm on this sh- this Netflix show called Easy, which is um, really one of my favorite things that I've done in a long time with this filmmaker Joe Swanberg, and um, it's all improvised. Oh wow! Um, and it's a anthology series. It all takes place in Chicago, and every episode is a different uh, group of characters. But well, that sounds um, perfect for what you were talking about before. You get to stretch out and do lots of different things. Yeah, I mean, it's different actors. Uh, you episode. don't get to play everyone. I don't get to play every character. No, oh, I see. should. Where's your phone? Let me call them. Yeah, let me. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so I, I did. That's a, exciting. I did some more of that. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, schmacked in a way. Well, you are easy. Yeah, Thank horn you. it out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you, man. Yeah. yeah. Sam Beam, Michael Chernus, thank you so much for joining us here on the TalkHouse podcast. Yeah, that was great. And if you want to get a little touch of Chernus, Easy Season 2 is now on Netflix. Spider-Man Homecoming is available, you know, wherever you get your DVDs and Blu-rays and all that jazz. And I am personally looking forward to seeing the kindergarten teacher Michael's new movie, which will be a Sundance. And I will be there at Sundance. You're going to catch this one in the theater. Yeah, it'll be fun. Listeners, make sure you check out Beast Epic. This is going to be on a lot of best of the year end lists. If you enjoyed today's episode, head over to iTunes and Stitcher and subscribe. Every time you do, it helps somebody else find the podcast. Pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. And for a video version of today's podcast recorded live at the flagship Sono store in Soho, Manhattan, head over to our YouTube channel. We got a bunch more Sono stuff there, video essays, more conversations. It's kind of great. Nick, you're kind of great. Thank you. And also kind of great is our, our, our Facebook page. Our Instagram. Twitter. And of course, just go to talkcast.com and like just revel in all the awesome written content we have there as well. Listeners, go revel. Today's talk was recorded and co-produced by Mark Yoshizumi. Thanks, Mark. Happy holidays. <laughs>